You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. Welcome back. Our part of Texas is a good place to be a Republican. It's been reliably red for decades now, and I can't think of any Democratic candidates who are even challenging our Republican incumbents this November. But it didn't always used to be that way. In fact, not too long ago, it was quite the opposite. Democrats who grew up in West Texas throughout the last century will tell you that it was great to be a part of the only party out here. That's a past that the 134 PAC wants to bring back. Named for the 134 Texas counties west of I-35, this political action committee is focused on strengthening the Democratic Party in our part of the state. And joining us now is the founder of the 134 PAC and a former Democratic candidate in Texas's 11th Congressional District, Mr. John Mark Hogg. John, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So we've got about three months left before the midterms, and yes. there's been about 20 midterms since any Democrat in our part of the state has had a shot in them. Uh, so when you look uh, at the next three months, what do you hope that you and your organization uh, can accomplish for Democrats here? Well, our, our organization, you know, yes, we're interested in the 2022 election, but we really have a much longer term view than that. Uh, this is just building, you know, um, we're more focused on building local parties across West Texas and in the South, Southern South Plains and the Panhandle over time than this one particular election. But what we are planning, working on during this time is building county parties where there are in counties where there aren't. And we're also, we've been raising funds and having fundraisers uh, and we'll be providing grants to uh, rural county parties all across the region. Uh, to help their get out the vote efforts and that's the thing that we can do uh, that's that's of the most benefit if we can increase our turnout and our participation democratic vote in this area of texas even by a few percentage points that can go a long way towards helping the ticket overall right a lot of people think about the the top of the ballot races or, or you know the mm -hmm. statewide campaigns but it's not just about that often uh, in rural texas some of the biggest problems for democrats are on the the a much smaller level you know it's about building up precinct chairs and and county infrastructure what what yeah, kind of things do you think the democratic parties in, in some of these smaller counties really need right now well what we really need right now is just basic infrastructure uh the party has uh, for for whatever reason over over the last several decades has essentially uh resigned rural texas to the republicans uh, and what we see and what the 134 PAC is about is trying to build that infrastructure back uh, and s slowly over time. Uh, there are 50, you know, we're, we call ourselves the 134 PAC because there's 134 counties between El Paso and I-35. Uh, out of those counties, 50 do not have a Democratic county chair or a party. Uh, and so what we're about is we have to build out that infrastructure. Uh, in partnership with the party and other organizations and on our own as well. Uh, so one of the things we're involved in is, is, is talking to people and making connections and building up so we can start reducing that level. We have to have an organization in the basic infrastructure statewide to be able to compete and also to get Democrats elected at the local level, which as you said, is where most of the government, probably we would think the most important jobs in government are probably county commissioners justices of the peace, you know, county judges, that sort of thing. Not too long ago, John, you were on the ballot yourself. Did you see that lack of infrastructure firsthand while you were running in it as a Democrat in this part of the state? What did that experience teach you uh, about West Texas? Oh, I, I absolutely. It impacted. I, I was Democratic county chair of Tom Green County back in the 90s when Bill Clinton was president, and we thought we had it bad then. Um, and what, what I saw when I ran for Congress, it was the 29, dis, 29 counties in District 11, half of them did not have county chairs or the party had list, people listed as county chairs who told me on the phone, I'm not the county chair. And I told them years ago, I'm not, I won't be it anymore. Uh, and so we just had this complete lack of infrastructure, uh, people telling me just to avoid their counties, uh, which I ignored. but. You know, we knew it was a tough district going in. It's an 80-20 Republican district. We knew we were going to lose, but the whole idea was to start using that as a basis. And that was actually an inspiration for the one through four pack was to say, look, we have to start doing something. 
And if the state party is not going to do it, then we out here in West Texas have to control our own destiny. We have to start trying to bring back a competitive Democratic Party and just to have the competition of ideas, because that's the best way we get good government is when we have the comp that competition of ideas. Right. We've seen some of the ideas uh, that some major Democratic candidates have brought to West Texas recently. I know Beto mm -hmm. O'Rourke has been here three times in just the last year. Mike Collier has been once. And it's pretty interesting to watch what their message is compared to a speech that they may give in, in Houston or Austin. Uh, it focuses on a lot more issues that they think are uniquely um, impactful to rural Texas. W what do you think is the winning message uh, for, for Democrats in this part of the state? What, what do you hope the party focuses on? Well, I think we have to focus on uh, things that are of a more local nature and a regional nature. Uh, I mean, the, part of the problem of politics is we nationalize everything. Uh, when, in fact, the things that uh, people are really concerned about in rural Texas are the same things that people worry about all the time. Jobs, the economy, uh, public education, the lack of health care, our rural hospitals closing. You know, basically kitchen table, bread and butter type issues are the things that I think that people vote on and impact on the most. And those are the things, I think that's what you're hearing from Democratic statewide candidates and that we've been talking to and then they've been out here is to realize that there are a lot of issues that are important to other people other than just what the national Democrats and the national Republicans want to talk about. And that's the thing I think that, that Mr. O'Rourke and Mr. Collier are bringing to the table is let's start talking about those issues. Let's start talking about the PUF um, you know, fund uh, and the equity for the schools mm -hmm. like Texas Tech and, and and other schools in the West Texas area to have their fair share. Let's start talking about the fact that our rural hospitals keep closing everywhere and we're having no access. Let's talk about the fact that rural areas of the state have not benefited to the extent that the rest of the state has in this you know, incredible Texas miracle. They like to talk about the booming economy and all the jobs coming to the state. Well, they're not coming to West Texas. Uh, we have declining populations and all those issues. Those are the things that I think that rural people are concerned about and that and when you tap into those issues they're not they're not republican or democratic issues they're just real issues that affect people every day and I, that's where i think the democratic party has gone wrong over the years and where hopefully we can start to try to to gain some ground back on on those issues well, it's a long fight ahead, um, but uh, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective sure. about uh, the road that you have in front of you. John Mark Hogg, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks. Thank appreciate you. it. And when we come back, the road that we have in front of us, Plan B for City Streets, coming up.